Our name is Guidance. They finished 2018 with a 10-3 record and tied for first in the East Division and earned a Peach Bowl appearance. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. So uh, I guess I'm the warm-up back for Bill Corolla to follow. Um, good to see everybody here. Hope you had a good summer. Um, brought three really good football players with us to, uh, to Chicago this weekend. Ben Bredesen, starting offensive guard. Jordan Glasgow uh, plays multiple positions on our defense. The Viper, the Will linebacker, by far our best special teams player. <clears throat> And Kalik Hudson, maybe, maybe one of the best leaders on our team, is one of the best leaders on our team. Uh, our Viper uh, combination, safety, outside linebacker, can really rush the passer. Uh, tremendous football player. All three just go. They never, they never really ask why. They never pout. They never complain. Uh, true, three true football players. Uh, a lot like our team. You know, there are multiple guys like that. We're a young, we're an enthusiastic team, but we've got guys that have, have played in uh, a lot of games and a lot of experience. Ben Bredesen's played in 38 games since he's been at the University of Michigan out of a possible 39. Uh, Kalik has played in 38 out of 39, and Jordan Glasgow's played in 39 out of 39 over the past three years. Um, with that, I'll open up to questions, as they say. Bob Espenson, Champion News Gazette. The Big Ten's missed last two playoffs. What's wrong? Did I drop the mic? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have all the answers to that. Maybe something that uh, would be worthy of of you researching, <laughs> studying. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Dan Worthy question. Hi, Jim. Dan Oak from 11 Warriors. There's a lot of expectations for you guys this year that maybe this is the year you can end the streak against Ohio State, that you can win the Big Ten. What do you guys need to do differently? What do you What do you guys need to do better in order to make that happen? Sure. So it really starts with our goals. That's, uh, you know, you named um, half of them anyway. Um, you know, and uh, also to you know, win, the, win the Big Ten championship qualify for the playoffs, win the national championship. Um, those are our goals. And then you then you put those to the back of the mind and, and focus on uh, how, how you can achieve those. So, um, you know, that's, that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to do better, trying to do more, uh, you know, focus on that, you know, that day to day. I think it's good right now. I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's tight, um, but like an anaconda. You know, you want to just keep squeezing it tighter and make it better. And um, that's where a football team is. Hi, Coach Harbaugh. I'm Tom Kelly from On the Room Sports Chaos. My question is, how do you think the, the new, with Coach Gaddis, with the new office, how has it helped you in recruiting? Okay, uh, I would, I would, I'll start with that, you know, just how it's helped us with our football team. Really felt watching Shea Patterson, especially, uh, and Dylan McCaffrey also, uh, their playmaking ability, their ability to, to operate uh, as a passer and as a runner, how explosive they both are. Uh, Shea, with his ability to uh, make quick decisions, really fits uh, the shotgun, really fits the, the RPO world, really fits um, the up-tempo. They both like it. And I would say the same for Joe Milton. And Kate McNamara. Uh, that's the kind of systems that they are used to and come out of high school playing. And I would say that for you can say that for most all quarterbacks now that are that are playing high school football. That's that's really uh, the trend there. So with Coach Gaddis, been watching Coach Gaddis since he was at uh, Western Michigan uh, and followed his career. Felt. Uh, was just very decisive when the opportunity presented itself to hire Josh Gaddis. He's been excellent. We've been learning from him. 
Uh, he's got a great system. Uh, and uh, also, you know, like our team, um, I said earlier, we got a young, enthusiastic team, which also has a lot of experience. I mean, that, you could describe Josh Gaddis in that, that very same way. He's a, he's a young, enthusiastic, uh, high energy coach that uh, really fits our team because we have a we have a group of coaches that that are exactly that way. Don Brown is, uh, as I said before, Don. I have not coached with a better coach than Don Brown. Um, and then we have this we have that group of, of coaches like Josh um, uh, in their thirties. I call them the best young coaches that I've seen in. 35 years, Anthony Campanelli, uh, new to our staff this year, Sean Nua, new to our staff this year, and um, also Sharon Moore, who coached on our, on our staff last year, coached the tight ends again this year, um, you know, same group. I would put my son Jay Harbaugh, who coaches the running backs, in that group of, uh, but humility prevents me from doing that, but... But the facts are, he is one of the best young coaches I've seen in 35 years, so I'll, I'll put him in that group. Um, he's just got a great staff. I, I, this, this staff, you feel like you're, you're locked arms with 10 other guys and, and uh, attacking the world. Ed Warner, our offensive line coach, uh, really improved our, our offense last year in terms of the running game, in terms of pass protection, uh, sacks allowed uh, right across the board. and. Mike Zorich, our, our secondary coach, keeps producing uh, corners that uh, play at a high level, uh, not only uh, play at a high level in the, in the Big Ten Conference and nationally, also uh, go on to, to have uh, really good pro careers and, and be drafted high. Uh, he's an outstanding coach. I think you know about Chris Partridge. Uh, he's been been our staff uh, quite a while. He's, he's uh, in the same category, uh, soon to be head coach. Uh, tremendous in, in all areas, uh, coaches our special teams and, and our safeties and, and does a fabulous job. And, and Ben McDaniels uh, coaches our quarterbacks, uh, does a fun, phenomenal job. Uh, is, uh, he grinds, he works extremely hard at it, and uh, he really, really knows it and, and uh, is, has learned it and now is an expert uh, you know, in, this, in this offensive system that Josh has brought. Um, so across the board, I just um, you know, feel our coaching staff is in, in the best place that it's been. I feel like you know, some real reinforcements uh, on the staff. So thanks for that question. Good morning, Jim. Teddy Greenstein from the Chicago Tribune. Uh, you mentioned in the podcast, you talked about Urban Meyer. Controversy follows him, I think it was. Any context we should know about with that line and any regrets about the comment? Uh, no, I don't see any, uh, no context you should know about that. I don't think it was anything that was um, anything new or anything of a bombshell. It's things that, that uh, many of you all have understand and have written about. Brandon, uh, you know, brings a lot to the table. He's uh, he's a six four, athletic, uh, you know, very strong arm and um, a very sharp guy. Um, so, you know, support Brandon and in, in, uh, his decision to to uh, transfer, and uh, you know, wish him wish him great success. Just wanted to get your thoughts on Ohio State hiring uh, Greg Madison and how Washington and what that adds to the rivalry as if it needs it. Uh, don't, don't really have any thoughts on that anymore. Um, I'll just refer you back to the comments that I made about the, I really love our staff uh, at the University of Michigan right now. 
Hi, Jim. Scott Dockman with The Athletic. I wanted to ask you about Oliver Martin. Were you surprised when he decided to transfer? And are you, what's your context as far as whether or not you would allow him to play right away at Iowa or right away? Yeah, I was surprised that uh, Oliver transferred. He was, you know, he had a really, really had a heck of a spring um, and was at the top of our depth chart coming out of the spring ball uh, and was doing very well in school, um, you know, on his way to the Ross Business School. So that was, uh, that was a surprise. Um, your second question, part of the question was, would I allow him to play uh, right away, which is, uh, I have nothing to do with that. But, uh, the compliance offices uh, discussed that, and then ultimately that decision is made um, by the NCA. So it's a misconception of how you phrase that. I have nothing to do with his ability to play as a uh, right away. My opinion on it, which I can give you, um, is that you know, it should be it should be clear to what the rules are. Um, for youngsters when they transfer, um, my opinion is that every student athlete should have a one-time ability to transfer and and not have to sit out a year. Um, and then if they were to transfer a second time, then the, the previous rule that we had where you had to sit out a year of, of eligibility. Uh, and with that, I would also keep the graduate transfer rule that we have in place right now where uh, you can graduate and transfer and become immediately eligible. So um, you have one time where you can transfer, be immediately eligible. A second time would, uh, you'd have to sit out a year and um, while still having the graduate transfer rule. That would be, it would be good to just have a, have a, a clear, concise, uh, where everybody understands what uh, you know, what the ramifications are. I think that'd be a fair way to proceed. Hey Jim, Tim Chapman, Wildcat Report. As a former player and now as a coach, you guys have been picked to win the Big Ten. Do you, as a competitor, do you prefer to be at the top, picked at the top, or do you prefer to be those maybe just out on the outside as, as the hunters? <clears throat> I think that's where that's where I would pick us. Uh, Sam McEwen from the World Herald. Why? Why? Why would you pick yourself to to win the league? Is it just because you want to be the the league, or do you feel like you you guys have the, the strongest team? Yeah, I feel like. Um, as I said earlier, I feel like our team is in a, in a really good place. Uh, young, enthusiastic team with, with players uh, with a lot of a lot of good experience. I feel really good about uh, our coaching staff, and like I said, I, I feel like it's good. It's tight, and, and uh, you know we're proceeding on a daily basis uh, to make it uh, even tighter, even better. Raise your hand high, please, sir. Thank you. Coach Jackson Parker from the Buckeyes Wire. How can this year's team be different from years past and kind of live up to those high expectations of being at University of Michigan and uh, lofty goals? Can you repeat the question? Playing for Michigan, a historic program, you guys always have high hopes, a lot of hype around the program. How can this year's team? Uh, live up to that more, get to Indianapolis, the college football playoff possibly, and win some more hardware. Yeah, uh, so, uh, like, that's the goal. I mean, that's the uh, that's the goal. That's what drives you. That's what starts you off. That's what, what, what gets you moving. And and, uh, and then how, how you go from there is, you know, on a daily basis, you are focused, you know, with disciplined thinking of, of uh, of the task at hand and the process, the process of, of realizing those goals and making those goals happen. So um, yeah, doing doing that, uh, better discipline thinkers, better better focus on uh, uh, 
task day by day. That's that's how we're going about it. Gino Marie from College Sports Hello, Joe. Yesterday was mentioned um, the possibility of maybe down the line of the game the Big Ten being played in Mexico City. And given your guys' traveling the last few years in the offseason, what are your thoughts about that? Would you be interested in that if that scenario would take occur? Sure. Yeah, you know, like we like travel. Mexico City would be uh, would be great. I know um, you can talk to Ward and Doug about this. Um, we're we're scheduling. I think we're really close to announcing actually uh, playing another team on foreign soil. Uh, I won't say what it is because have you heard anything about this? And I better not say it. <laughs> you're probably not ready to release that yet. But. I think there's something really imminent. There'll be an imminent, an, an announcement soon on that. <laughs> short in the middle. Sky Ridge News, Champagne News, a uh, follow-up with Brandon Peters. There's a chance October 12th that you might you'll be game planning against him. Uh, is that I mean, what do you kind of think about that? Maybe that possibility. I mean, what, what would, how would you approach that? Yeah, well, uh, when I said I, I wish him uh, great success, I do, and I support him. And that will be one week that I won't be wishing him great success. But uh, you know, I think it's a really, really really good possibility that, that that'll happen because, um, you know, crew to Brandon, really love Brandon, and uh, he's a heck of a good football player, and um, and I do wish him wish him success. But specifically to your question, I, yeah, on that, that particular day, um, I'll be w wishing him as much success. That's all of our time. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.